Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alex, and welcome to welcome back. I should really say the Hearts of Iron. You're probably wondering why am I playing this game again? I seem to have a very strained relationship with it now. Well, because I wanted to teach everyone here. This is going to be more of a series to explain how to play Hearts of Iron 4, so that in the future, if you wish to play this game, uh, you can come here. It's this is going to be kind of a tutorial series mixed with uh just a what do so i have a lot of experience in this game so i generally know how everything works so to begin obviously we want to click single player and new game All right honestly if this if you are confused by anything in the videos just click on this tutorial tab which i shouldn't have clicked so i will be right back when i am back to the main menu Alright, I have returned. So, if you honestly want an easy way to explain the game, click on this tutorial tab. I mean, we'll start a brand new game. So, there, every time you start a Hoi 4 game, you have two options for scenarios. Pretty much, this is, this is the long game, this is a shorter game. So, explained here generally what the context is, but this is kind of when World War One is... No, this is the pre-war leading up so right after hitler gets power kind of focusing on the rise of those powers and how they get to the how they become as powerful as they are here as explained here here is pretty much um this is literally just oh you have a few days germany you can immediately start by playing poland uh immediately invading poland and whatnot this is pretty much if you want to start world war II. To pretty much immediately as you start the game. This is if you want to set up. Uh, this also allows you to do different kinds of events that can't happen here because the gears have already been set in motion. You will select that one and you can select any country. Now these are all countries that have focuses, meaning that they have special trees that may strengthen or forget. If you select other countries that just opens up the world map that allows you to view any country in the world. You can click on it and play as it. All right. So for an example, I can play as British Malaysia or Thailand or Yahan or Guan Click or Nepal or Bhutan or Tibet. Now, some of them aren't fun. So we'll, we'll do the, we'll do the German Reich for the reasoning of it's a very simple nation. Because everyone else is going to go based off of how you play. For the most part. So then down here we have uh, a difficulty tab. Civilian, recruit, regular, veteran, and elite. So think of it as really easy, easy, normal, hard, very hard. That's how it goes. Iron Man is just you have one save file. It's explained pretty much here. But it's pretty much you have one save file. If you lose that save file, meaning you... Your entire country gets capitulated and you're playing like Germany. If you capitulate you're gonna, and you get the game over screen, you can't reload to a previous save. It's one save file. That also means if the save file corrupts, you can't bring it back. Through traditional means. And if you have... And down here is just how you get achievements. I have some mods enabled. Um, I'll link them in the description, but they'll just make the game a little bit better better because this game is slightly uh we're gonna turn on historical focuses because we want the game to go about as much as it did world war ii so far okay so first of all the three mods i chose were player-led fast justification and um a remake of the original portrait note if you're playing the non-steam version of the game if you play the german reich hitler's Picture will actually be blackened out for you, and he'll be wearing his signature hat that all Hoy 4 members know. That's because there's a specific uh, piece of content you have to download to uncensor the German Reich. But anyway, so we have... Now, you're probably very confused if this is your first time playing. If you're playing uh, the top... If you've played other Paradox games, then you know exactly what to do. But let me explain. These are notifications. Their picture shows you what they're for. And hovering over them also tells you what's happening. 
So, on the top left, you have your flag. If you click on that, you have a political uh, panel pulled up. Here's how you technically control the government. Here's your leader, hover over him, we'll show you what kind of bonuses he gives you, he or she will give you their name, your government, so for an example, the fascists, uh, it will actually highlight quickly what they are, and some bonuses, and some, and the middle stuff that says can force government to, uh, can force government of another country to adapt the same ideology, and that just means if there's an X, that means that's not available to that. For example, we can't do that yet. Uh, this kind of does lie. Eventually, we'll be able to. Uh, no elections. If you're playing as, say, France, France. So if you click on another country, you get this second panel. This is the region panel. It tells you how many roads, how many air bases, how many anti-air, how many radio, how many ra railroads. And then this... Here, for us, is pretty much how many factories we can unlock. Uh, the population. What, like, material this has. This is the can nuke button. We'll get to that later. It's a supply hub or land fort. Uh, whoops. See, Daisy, misclicked. You can uh, see, for an example, we have one supply hub here in um, Württemberg. We don't have any land forts. Foreign claims means that another country claims this region right here is owned by them. So for France, you're going to have the Octanias, but they don't exist. But they're going to claim they own the land. So if you play as France, you can have an option to release them. We'll get to that later. But you can click here on Owner. And you open up their version of the state of the diplomacy. Technically, this is the diplomacy tab. So you have it's slightly reworked. So you have two sections. First, you have the flag. You then have what type of government they are, their name if they're in a faction, their lead, uh, their leader name. Uh, this is their opinion of you, so the top means that's your opinion, the bottom means that's their opinion. Stability just means that's how much the country is technically stable. If it hits a certain point, then that means civil wars can happen. And war support just means how much the population wants, like, is able to invade, which means that will affect things such as how many troops you can pull out and etc. Now here, this little pie chart's pretty useful. Blue is democracy... Red is communism, gray is not a line, and if we go back to ours, brown is fascist. Those are your four political parties. The pie chart shows you what percentage of the population is focused on that. So, for an example, our major party is the fascist party, obviously, because we have Hitler in charge. But, for an example, we have 20 communism and 20 democracy, but no, none a line. So, anyway... We also have this thing called national focuses. These are like little bonuses that the country gets. So you get, so R3 pretty much means that we can create a faction and that ideological drift defense means that every, that means um, pretty much that our fascists, since they're the majority, they are going to slowly tick up as they're slowly ticking up. They, there's a higher points that it stays because sometimes a party may get like 30 votes but then they may disappear. Um, obviously, if it's green, that means that's a positive for you. If it's red, that means the negative for you. If it's orange, that means it's not necessarily a positive or negative. So, this and this just shows you what factions... The nation's in, if we go back to France, it will be shown right there for non-players. The Intel ledger pretty much just shows you all you know. So for an example, total civilian, total army, one out. We'll get to this part later when we actually explain other things. But that's just a way to tell quickly, are you strong enough or can you take them on? For an example, they have 122 troops compared to... Are 
30. So we would lose in a war with them greatly. Which, by the way, if you are in the Diplomacy tab and you click on your country, uh, it will also show up everything that's needed in the same order, including your own ledger in case maybe you don't realize what you have. And if it's you, your username for Hoi4 will show up right here. Now we're going to go back to the, uh, the Diplomacy, which is just a simple queue. And let's... Let's quickly explain. So down here you have three options. You have managed subjects, collaborations, and occupied territories. So occupied territories means that there are nations. This will be shown for any nation you have conquered and you brought part, part of you that isn't a core. Core means that it's a state that is permanently yours and you're the only one that claims ownership. So for an example, within Germany, we have Silesia and Keshnaba, who both claim to be independent and that they own the territory. So if we hover over uh, now because now hovering over them shows which state that they claim ownership over. And since we are the German Reich, we cannot release them. But if we are for an example, France, we could release that Octania and they would appear there. We would no longer own the state and now and now they would own it. Except when you release a nation, you also have a chance to release as a puppet. We'll get to that later, but that's important. You should do that for certain reasons. But yeah. Um, this thing right here is territorial support means uh, I believe that if I am correct, that means that is the terror. Oh, that's how much foreign powers are trying to support these guys from resisting. So, for an example, if we unclick this, since it shows non-resisting, nothing. Since these guys aren't resisting, meaning they claim they're a different thing, but still don't want. Uh, resistance, there will be a bar. We'll talk to this. We'll get to this one a little bit more. But... When we get a puppet or an annexed territory, I'll explain more because it's hard to explain from just these two. So remember, Q is to open up this political panel. Collaborative governments is rare, but pretty much means that if you're in a war, uh, it's it's actually f it's better to explain with the Soviet Union. So the Soviet Union, for an example, if we take Estonia, we can't immediately puppet it. The Soviet Union doesn't generally allow you to do that but you may get a notification that states that you can make a collaborative government that's where this comes in uh the collaboration which means certain governments may do certain things for an example we control their military but they control the diplomacy yada yada largely managed subjects is just your puppet tab open that up you'll show a list of puppets and how close they are from either you allowing to reduce their uh, puppet, uh, their reduced their autonomy, which means how much level of authority they have it for themselves. If it reaches absolute zero for the la last one, you can just bring it into your territory. On the if, on the other side, if it's higher, then that allows them to go higher in autonomy, eventually becoming independent. Generally, that doesn't happen for fascist countries because generally they are released um, by being defeated. So yeah, so press Q again to open up the political tab if you haven't closed it. And down here is law and governments. It's pretty self-explanatory, but here you have political advisors. X means you can't use them. Hovering over them, it will explain why. But pretty much, if you're confused what they mean... Just hover over them and they'll explain exactly what they do. For an example, the smooth chalker will make relations easier. Backroom stabber will make our ideology defense stronger, which we already have because of uh, because of bitter loser and whatnot. Mobilization just means how much of your uh, country and, of course, how much of your population pops up it's they're pretty self-explanatory what they do 
just by hovering over them. Conscription is how much the how much people can be conscripted. For an example, we can't conscript the entire population and whatnot. Down here is pretty much just um, different bonuses you can give to your naval, land, and aerial. Here's just a general bonus in research, bonus in your factories, and a bonus in whatever and and a wild card. So if you want, for an example, a better focus on rockets or planes and etc. Down here are just bonuses for your. Uh, militaries as explained like you have a high command all right now that we've explained the entire political panel let's get to the uh, national focuses so select that button and the and these are your kind of focus trees well they're called focus trees but pretty much these are little events slash things you need to do to progress a certain plot for an example as germany we have two options at the very start to focus on the German path. We can either demilitarize the Rhineland, which will throw in the mo which throw in the motion of World War II, as you can see, with us deciding to bang Sudetenland, to bang Slovenia, etc. Now, if we go the other way, we can oppose Hitler, kill him, and do which then will open up the alternate history, where we can, for an example, bring back Kaiser Wilhelm. Or we can become a democratic uh, Germany. Or we can become a communist Germany. Though there isn't an easy way to become a communist Germany. As generally, Germany does not like communists. All these other things, for example, naval rearmament and etc. etc. The first thing we should do is the Rhineland. By the way, if they have this little arrows with an exclamation part. That means you have to pick one or the other. You can't have both. So for an example, we can't demilitarize the Rhineland or oppose Hitler. Because if you oppose Hitler, a civil war will begin. And then Rhineland is automatically demilitarized. So, uh, we'll get the civil wars later. Much later in the series. So, we'll do a Rhineland. And it explains exactly what here. It will explain that these two territories will no longer be demilitarized. Which, by the way, you can see from... Here, this little outline means it's demilitarized. Here in the Bal uh, Baltic Strafe, right down here for the Bosphorus, are both demilitarized. You have to do a focus to unmilitarize them. So we're going to quickly cl so click on the troops and we pretty much have three division, three groups of three armies. Now, if we click on them, we can smite. We can bring in a. Commander. Now, you may recognize them. These are all apparent uh, generals and commanders. Now, of course, we want Rommel, but there are four things, pretty much. This means the higher this skill is, it means the less supplies they will consume. This means they're better at planning. Oh, god damn. Rommel is getting outclassed by this guy, Eric von Meinstein. This means that defense-wise, troops will... When troops need to defend, they will be at a better advantage. And this, of course, means that when they push, they'll be at a better advantage. So we'll have Romwell and um, Manstein. These also are bonuses to themselves. So we'll click on them. And they are little pluses. Click on here and you open up this massive tree. These are traits you can give the general, meaning these are bonuses you can give him. So for an example, we can give Romwell gorilla fighter but that costs command points we'll get to those four later but that's a general understanding these guys i guess we'll give them a general we'll give them theodore von bach by the way all all generals can only have up to 24 divisions to lead effectively so if you want to do for an example the soviet union and have a lot of troops in one army you can technically do that, but of course, that is... This is also a very basic explanation of the command system. If we, for an example, take one of these guys, make him a commander, we now have a... Uh, we have a commander, but this is more like a field marshal. We have a field marshal, we want to pick 
probably Gunther von Klunge. So, field marshals, very small amount, but the thing is, they give bonuses, including four extra plans you can do. Now, generally, I don't mess with this tab, but this is a very, once again, you can also equip. You can also give him bonuses. So, there we go. That's the very basic explanation of the uh, commander, um, explana uh, commander system. And now we are going to progress by go to the National Focus and click Rhineland. Now, if we go to the top right, you have pretty much four things you need to keep track of. These four, Army, Navy, and Air, just show you everything you have. This is music, so you can change to whatever soundtrack you want. Here, whatever theater you click on, so for an example, we're in here, we're in, a, we're in the German theater for water, and here are all the, you know, this is the, this is a theater. Every troop within this theater can be selected and told to do something. Now, here's your time, so you can unpause and repause the game with spacebar, and you can use plus and minus to reduce speed, this pretty much... This pretty much increases how fast the game's going. Never play at one speed unless you really want to try to understand because it's so slow, this game. That's also why I recommend two mods, player light and pacification, because they make the game slightly better. Now we're going to go to three speed. That's about the average. And now we're going to unpause the game. Now this means focuses take a certain amount of days. So it'll take 70 days for our Rhineland focus to be completed. So while that's going on, we will explain these, pretty much the rest of this. So on the very top left, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different things you need to keep track of. This is your PP or political power. This is pretty much how you can do things such as, as it explains here, represents the country's ability to command the state. You can use it on to change all of these. You need PP to change all of this and do certain other actions, which we'll get to later. But that's what PP is for. So you want to build that up. If you are doing a focus, your PP will be reduced by one, plus other things like the Memfo Bill. Stability, we've already explained, but pretty much it's just how much your country is stable. If it gets to too low, your the people from a, an opposing party will revolt and try to overthrow you. If you're overthrown, you lose the game. War support is just how much um, people want to finish a war and whatnot. They're pretty much well explained by the game itself, but it's understandable that this what you want this and this to be both higher numbers. This is how much people you can recruit. That doesn't necessarily mean how much people you have in your party. This just means 1.34 million Germans can be recruited. And you can see it's broken down from there. So it's saying that 28.16 thousand is for the air, for your aerial. And 21.00 thousand, so 21 thousand, is being used for our navy. And army in the field. The important thing is actually for Hitler's, for Germany's focuses, at least for the actual Hitler path, some of them require you to have see at least 500,000 manpower in the field. So you hover over that to see how much you have. Factories, this is how much max factories you have. This is how much fuel you have. So certain actions like using the Navy and your aerial requires factory. Logistics is just how much stuff you have and how much you need. So if you're in the negatives, this will tell you if you are. Convoys, this is how much you can use for trading and for transferring troops. Now let's explain these four for a second. These are experiences. You can use them to get upgrades as seen from this officer course tab. So all of these are bonuses you can do for your army, but requires you to have a certain amount of focuses, amount of experience. You get experience by, of course, doing it. So if you're, do if you're doing a lot of troop movement, for an example, if we go down here, there's a toolbar. If you go to the very left and click exercise, they will exercise. But this will also give them more experience. It will also 
slowly increase her army experience. So you get 0.3d a daily once that adds up. So we will have all we'll have everyone exercise because we also want to rise up our infantry. So we'll get to that in another part. But that's a pretty much it. Come on. You use this to buy powers and you use command powers to get commanders. All right, now let's explain this thing right here. This is probably going to be the last thing we explain. Oh, there's a few more things to explain, but okay. So decisions, you can choose things that have events. For example, they're pretty ex pretty self-explanatory, but we can use PP to demand the, tut the, the Dutch increase trade agreements with us. We want us to have the higher number compared to the UK. Here are other decisions. For example, we can ban parties, institute censorship, raids. So we can, for an example, do a raid against the communist and democratic, which will make their mounts lower. We can also cancel the Memphis bill. But, you know, and for an example... Um, and also days will show. It generally shows you what you need to do. Intelligence agencies, you can build one. We won't touch this just yet. Research, pretty much you can choose uh, what things to research. Now, industry, engineering, you want to research. It's by law, but you want to research construction one, base mechanical tools, and electronic mechanized engineering. The reason is because all three of these give you bonuses for speeds, repairment, production in like armies, and lastly and not least, research speeds. Now also you want to build this equipment because it shows you the dates. So for an example, we are technically in this weapons and equipment thing. We are kind of outdated because we should be about here or not. So it's it's pretty self-explanatory, I'll say. We will get more comp we will have a much more deeper dive. This is more of an overview. Diplomacy is pretty simple. It shows you what countries hate you, what countries do not hate you. Uh, you can click on them to see that diplomacy tab we pulled out earlier. Next we have uh trade. Pretty much it shows us what materials we're lacking in. For an example, rubber. We can click on a country like Brazil. And this will show that, oh, we'll get this amount of units. We have to give them a certain amount of convoys. Along with that, we have to give them some. We have to buy some. So it's saying for one civilian factory, you'll buy eight. So that's actually a pretty good agreement. So we'll get three. It means we have less convoys. Construction allows you to build things. For example, coastal forts, land forts, naval bases, railways, supply hubs, etc. Now, some of them we can't do at this moment. But the thing we need to understand is military and civilian factories and consumer goods. So consumer goods is how much things we can trade and buy, for an example. Secondly, civilian factories will focus on this button, this consumer goods, and well, now that's done, and how much we can trade. Military factories is for building things such as, you know, troops. Now you click on one of them, it will show you all the regions. It will tell you how much that region already has, and it's max. So, for example, we want to build a little bit more military factories in this region because it's lacking. So, it'll show you how many factories are being, how many civilian factories are being used to build this one factory, and how long it'll generally take. It will, yeah, it tell you that it will take 40 days for it to be finished and we move on. We're gonna get rid of that. So let's go back to national focuses and let's choose befriend. Let's actually choose the anti come and turn pack. No, we want to choose army renovation because this will give us bonuses. Plus, we want to go down this tree to pretty much get the Molotov Ribbentrop pack so it'll be easier for us to invade. Um, it'll be easier for us to invade. Poland later on when we get there. So see now when you have enough political power, the game will also show you by highlighting this that's saying, hey, 
you can do something here. So we'll demand trade again, and we will actually start doing these two raids. Right? We want to ban these parties. We don't want to ban communist because that will give us in a very negative spot with Mr. Joseph Stalin and whatnot. Okay, next things first. Oh, okay, by the way, uh, we'll explain this map thing at the very end. But after the construction, we have production. This is showing everything militarily that's being produced. So we have 28 military factories. Yellow means that it's a, red means that there's just not enough factories that are being used. So we're wasting factories. This is telling us we're about good, but you want it being green. Green means about max. So for an example, we want to do this. So there you go. It's in green, so all the factories are being used. This tells us that we have this many factories being worked on, so we get 30... 58.26 a day. Uh oh, Italy just took. And that we have this much is needed for reinforcements. And this just shows us the efficiency. And uh, the yellow is the cap. The red means that... No, green is efficient. Red means that it's not efficient enough because we just added enough. If you don't want to also click here, you can also just click here or here. If, for an example, you add too many factories, it'll be grayed out and the factory will, will, will show. This means it's being stockpiled and that it's been good. Now, of course, there's some outdated things. For an example, we need to get rid of these early submarine hubs. Holes. Because they're not being used anymore. That's what an X means. If this, yeah, that means it's outdated. You can also see it hovering over. And that is about it. Now we have some free naval dockyards. So boats use dockyards. Military factories are used by planes and land. Just keep that in mind. Next is the recruit and deployment. Pretty much this you don't generally need, but what you have some divisions. For example, let's train some panzers. So when you click on them, train, you can see what regions you can select. You see, technically, we can't choose the German Reich that's in East Persia. Not entirely sure, it might be due to the fact that it is surrounded by an enemy force. But anyway, we will, for an example, click in Mecklenburg. So now every time we have Mecklenburg, well, every time they're done, it'll be for Mecklenburg. We can add units. This is how much we can add. So we will add five. So it will be divisions of five panzers. This shows how much equipment is needed. And if the green means that we have some of that stockpiled. And that it can be actively worked on. You want to be this in the green if it's in the... So we have five divisions. Every time these five are finished, they will be released here. Now, here, um, if there are some done, but it's not all done. And automatically deploy, you can deploy some. Here you can cancel all production. So we'll work on these panzers. These panzers are ultimately what we need. This is telling us we have some free military factories, so we should focus on giving some more improved land chassis just so that panzers have something to work with. It's telling us we can modify the government. So um, can we actually ban? Anyway, yes, we're going to ban the Democratic Party. That's going to give us some base stability, but also... So, um, you see, if we work on this, by the time the Brits figure out what we're doing, we'll be high enough number to outbeat them. So what we, what I just did there was, uh, here is I just banned the party. So since I banned them, that means any time. So that means we get the majority votes. So that means anyone who becomes democratic immediately loses their support because it's such a negative. See, they're losing 0.10 plus the raids and the ban. The ban means they can't. Eventually they may come back, but that's another thing for another time. We have a free resource slot. So we'll work on, work on co mechanized computing because it increases our research spe speed by even more. And you can see your bonuses up here. Lastly, we have the logistics tab. Now, what this logistics tab 
this logistics tag means oh what this logistics tab means it shows what things being produced its status so for now how much the balance and stock stored so it's saying that we are not we are at a deficit for artillery same with support equipment and light tanks so that means we should but we are at a very good amount for infantry equipment so that means we should kind of be focusing we should reduce how we should be adding to these guys so that there's a higher amount made as such to get a better amount so army army renovations is done and next, we want to do a treaty with the USSR. Lastly, Officer Score. I kind of already explained this, but pretty much there are three spirits. They give you bonuses once you have enough. So we want to do... Um, meticulous Preparations. Plus, when we get an, enough Command Points and PP, we can... Um, Get this in, so we have some pretty good command points. All right. Next, let's explain this. So, click on one of your generals down here, right. one of your armies. Don't do a commander, because they can't do much Come things. So, you have a bunch of things here, including three bonus ones, because we have a field marshal. This is pretty much a force attack, which means... To use these, you have to use that command power. But pretty much, this will force them to all do here, but a bunch of, you know, bon uh, last stand and stay off or plan. These are bonuses that do make sense. All right, so we have the exercise. Pretty much when you click that, they will stand still and will move. Exercise battle plan. Pretty much if you want them to be aggressive, balanced, or passive, or more defensive, more aggressive, offensive, aggressive, medium. This is naval invasion. So when you have a dockyard, you can click like here. And then you click anywhere that has land. So for an example here. We want to cancel that order anyway, but then they'll go there. If there's a boat, you can you have to order the boat to come here. It will take some time in the transfer. You have to research. Ah, you see, the British have finally figured out what's going to happen. Now, luckily, we have more than zero PP and a bunch of other things. So the the bill is going to be modified and etc. But it's going to tell you right here. You have some decisions that are going to be focused. And somehow Bach falls ill. That's sad. That means he's now going to be. That means he's going to be less effective. So next we have naval invasion, and paratrooper. We don't need to focus on this, but floating harbor means that if it's a floating harbor, it's more of a military base. It, it it's about the same thing, just in a different location. And paratroopers means that you're pretty much telling it to go to a plane instead. And then drop down, but and drop down to a specific location. But since there's no paratroopers in his army, he doesn't have that ability. That's the smart thing about Hoi 4. They only do what they know they can do. So you see, it's going to take us 206 days to do that. So we're going to do something else. We're going to instead do improved engines. We'll do that in another video, which explains the reasoning why you do the such things. We're going to focus on radio. Here now. And this is telling us we have some free civilian factories. Now we can start working on some things. So we want to get a supply hub and click here. All right. The next thing to do is to front line. You pretty much click here. It'll highlight everything nearby that you can click on. So let's do Austria. We'll click here. And that immediately tells his troops to go over. We'll have him stop exercising for a moment. Now, underneath the number, there will be a bar. And it pretty much, if it's the more red there is, the more it means the foe stronger and etc. So an example, if I just invaded Austria with only Beck, we would, we're rising, but we would generally have, see we're having a better time since the more of our troops have shown up. The point that I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. See, well, see now it's all red. It's going to slowly rise up. This just means you command. So when you're invading, you want to press this button. It'll actually tell the AI to move. Go 
but we want to cancel that plan. So go all the way to delete order, click that, it disappears. He goes back, back to exercising. But quickly, we have to actually click here to show you the rest. So offensive line, you want to do this if it has a front line, but pretty much it generally tells the AI, hey, from about here, you want to make your way to Vienna, right? And then that's when you, when you would stop exercising, click that button, etc. This edit mode allows you to change, for an example, how long. So if you, you have to right click, for an example, if I'm telling them now to go here, no, yeah, generally. So we're gonna delete this. And lastly, this is a spearhead. This is pretty much, again, another way of forced attack. So this is pretty much telling you, you have to go this way. And if you want to add a troop to a division, for example, there's this order, you, 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 you click here. Right, and now that army is going to go there, but now there's no one here. And the ops, if you want to remove them, you click that little, you click the remove button, obviously. So, next is a fallback line. You pretty much just draw a line. The troops are all going to go there, and they're going to stay there. So, in case you're being pushed, you just go there and you fall back. Here's an area defense. While I've never used this, what it does is you tell it, hey, these are places you need to guard. So for an example, it, it's pretty much saying, oh, you need to guard the coastline. So for an example, if the coastline is taken, the AI will automatically go and try to retake it. Same with victory points. Next, we have to explain victory points, and then I'll explain the map, and then we can end the episode. So every nation, if you go close enough, you see these little circles plus the star. These are victory points. These are pretty much so every time you take a capital, if there are victory points left, the capital will be moved to the to a random victory point. You want to take all the victory points in order. Gamer, you want to take the victory point in order for the nation to fall. For an example, for Germany, you have to take one, two, three, four, five victory points in order for Germany to surrender. For Czechoslovakia, you need to do one, two, three, four, five, oh, one, two. These smaller ones are cities. These generally don't act as victory points. See, this screen will show you all the victory points. So you just need to take Prague here. Now, of course, ultimately, it will move to a, another location if victory points are taken. Because the AI, if it still has some energy left, will try to defend itself. Right? The goal is you want to take out all of the victory points, which will allow you to take the whole country. Lastly is over here a map button. Now, these are different maps. So if you press F1, this is the default map. I, this is the army map. But it's pretty much the default one. This is where you see your troops. This is where every nation's colored. It's the best map. Here, it will show you all the naval, all the name of the seas. And for an example, we'll tell you. If you click on this guy, you will. if you click on a troop, for an example, that happened earlier. If I click on aerial, it will show us the aerial, which is F3. F1, F2. So F1 is military. F2 is... Naval F3 is air. We'll get to these in a different, uh, but pretty much uh, we'll get to these two in a different video because we don't need them right now. F4 will show us supply. So supply is pretty much these low supply. That means how much of the equipment can you send to the troops so they can actually effectively. Sorry, I'm just going to research something. You want to actively be researching stuff. And of course, we want to be giving our like tanks, more and more stuff. And as you see, our logistics are improving. Which is good. It's pretty much the more blue, I guess you could say. Yeah. The cooler the color, the better it is. So since, see how it warm, so it focuses, 
So red is the worst. Bl blue, dark blue, purple is about the best. It means there's a lot of supply here. There's none. Your capital will be the supply cent capital hub. So all of them are all. All the supply is going to come from here and move to these supply hubs. So you always want a supply hub to be nearby. Right. It's always better to keep track of this. F5 is terrain. It just shows you, oh, over here is very forest, deserts, etc. F6 is compliance. And you see the same map when you open the compliance menu. It just shows, oh, anyone going to revolt? F seven is compliance okay f8 is resource this shows you where all the resources is what provinces give what so if you want you can tactically try to take those out f9 is infrastructure it shows you how good and how bad the greener it is the better it is f10 is capitals so if you only want to see uh Oh no, this is factions, apologies. So if, if a country is in a faction, for example, Germany is in the Axis, the Soviets are in the common term, and the Allies are in the Allies, right? It will show here. If they're not in one, it will just show their name instead of the faction. You can actually switch to this one, but operative modes will show you all your spies and all these spy funny things. Next we have... This just shows, for an example, if, uh, if you want to toggle the C units. If, like, for an example, if you only want to see units from players compared to units from everyone. This is colors. This just means the colors will be different depending on the... Um, Faction you're in. Battle plans will show battle plans. Yes, since we're not allied anyone, toggle day and night loop. This will disable and enable it. See, now it's going to be constantly going between day and night. Fog of war will make it to where. Um, I don't see the point of this. Don't have this on. And radar will pretty much show. Uh, normally, when you hover over, right, like a tower, it will show you, but this will just probably show it on the map. Alright. That, and that's about everything for this first episode. Um, if you guys did enjoy, if you did, please like that button, subscribe. In the next one, we will, um, go into a deeper look into, uh, conflict, whatnot, and focus trees as well as introducing the naval tank and aerial custom so see you guys next time goodbye